I don't know when this happened, but uh, React has me completely hooked. We start off by creating a new TypeScript React project by running npx create react app, passing the name of the application which we will call demo, and using the TypeScript template by passing in the flag minus minus template TypeScript. This sets up the new project, brings in all the required dependencies, and then creates a new directory called demo that we will cd into and now we can open it up in our IDE. Within the source of this application, we have a main application component within source app.tsx called app. It is a simple function component and one thing that you need to be aware of with React hooks is that you can only use them in function components. Now we will delete the boilerplate that already exists within this function component, only leaving the root div and remove this unused import of the logo as we don't want to get any TypeScript errors. Now in order to start our application, we open up the terminal and execute npm start. This starts the local development server and even opens up the browser showing our currently empty application. Now let's look at the problem that uState is designed to solve. We create a local variable called count and initialize its value to zero. We can render this local variable out to the UI, for example, by creating a button component within our app code and then rendering out the count and you can see this button on screen with the current count being displayed. We can create a local function called setCount that takes a new value and updates the count to be this particular new value. And then whenever the user tries to click the button, we can call the setCount function to provide it a new value. For example, set the count to count plus one. Now within the UI, when we click this particular button, the count is being updated, but we do not see the new value. Now within our application, we can add a console log statement within the setCount function to show that indeed the count value is being updated. And we can add a console log statement within the main rendering of the app component to show the count value whenever the component gets re-rendered. Now if you go to our application and open up the Chrome DevTools, you can see that the first time the component renders, we see the count value of zero. And whenever we click the button, the count value is actually being incremented as indicated by the console log statement that we added in the setCount function. However, despite the count value being changed, we do not see the app component being re-rendered as indicated by the absence of the rendering console log statement. Now, here's a neat trick. We can actually force a re-rendering of this particular component by opening up the components panel within React DevTools, selecting the app component and providing it a new prop. For example, we can add a dummy prop with just an empty object. And now because the props for this particular component have changed, React will re-render the component. However, within this re-rendering, you can see that the count has reset to its initial value of zero. Now, if you go to the application code, the reason for this should be pretty obvious. Whenever the component renders, we create a new local variable called count with an initial value of zero. And therefore the console log statement of re-rendering will always see this new value of zero. But this gives us the general idea of the features that we want that are provided by useState. We want an initial value and we want this value to be preserved between re-renderings and we want a function to update the value and whenever we call that function, we want the component to re-render. Now React ships with the useState hook so we can get it by simply importing it from the main React module. And now we can get rid of our custom implementation. Now the first thing that we have to do is to invoke the useState function. The useState function takes an initial value, which in our case we previously initialized to zero. So that is what we pass into the useState function. Now the useState function returns an array of two items. The first item is a preserved value of the state between different re-renderings. And the second member is a function that can be used to update the particular state. Here we are destructuring the two members of the array that is returned by useState. The first member of the array we store in this local variable called count and the second member we store in this variable called setCount. You are free to call these members whatever you want but the convention is to call the first member based on the state variable that you wanted and the second is set that particular state. So now we have the three things that we wanted. We got to pass in our initial value. We have a local variable that contains the initial value originally. And then as we update it, it contains the preserved value. And then we have this setCount function, 
which can be used to update this preserved value and whenever it is invoked, it forces React to re-render this component. And we can show this preserved value of count as well as the fact that this component is being re-rendered by simply adding the console log statement that we had before. Now within our UI, we still have the initial message of rendering the count zero, but whenever we call the setCount function with a new value, you can see that the component is re-rendered and then the variable that is returned from useState contains the updated value. Now that's the basics of the useState hook and the features it provides. Now let's look at some of its advanced concepts. Notice that whenever we are invoking the setCount function, we are reading the value of the count variable from the last render and using that to update the count to the next value. Updating the state by reading a rendered value is actually not recommended. So let's look at an example that demonstrates the kind of issues that you can run into if you do this. Let's say we want to update the count by calling set count twice whenever the user clicks the button. So if the user clicks the button once, we will increment it by one to the value one and then by one more to the value two. However, within the UI, when we click the button, we only see it incrementing by one. Now, if you look at the code, the answer should be pretty obvious. Even though we are calling the setCount function twice, we are calling it with the same value of zero plus one, which is one. Fortunately, the set functions from useState also take a functional argument. So instead of passing in a new value, we can actually pass a function to setCount and the function is invoked with a value of the count that currently exists within React's memory. So in the first call, React gives us count zero. So we tell it count plus one, which is one. And in the second call, React gives us one and we give it one plus one, which is two. So now when the user clicks the button once, we increment the value twice. So every single click increments it by two. So the general guidance is whenever you are updating the value by reading the last value, you should use the functional form for the set functions. Now let's clear up this example and look at some other features of the useState hook. In addition to simple primitives, you can also use JavaScript objects when using useState. Here we are passing in an initial object that has the members first of type string and last of type string. So in this case, our state variable, which we have called name, has the two members first and last. Now let's create an input component to update the first member. So we have its value wired to name.first and whenever on change is invoked on this input, we invoke the set name function using the functional form, passing in a new object with first set to the new value that is triggered from the event target value. And the last member is preserved by reading it from the name variable. Here, one thing to note about set functions is that you must pass in an object that has the same structure as what you want the final object to be. It will not merge any values. So if we forget to pass the last value, we actually get a compiler error from TypeScript as we have not provided the last member. Now we can provide it explicitly as we did before by reading it from name.last. However, it is conventional to use JavaScript spread to spread all the properties from the original object and only update the ones that we want. So in this case, we spread the whole of the name in place and then only provide first with the new value as e.target.value. And now just as an example, we can repeat the same process, creating another input for name.last and updating the last value in the onChange event. Now finally, to demonstrate that these changes are actually taking place, we will add another div and render out name.first followed by a space and name.last. Within the UI, we have the two inputs and we can provide a value for the first name as well as a value for the last name. This brings us to another concept within useState. If we have state members that don't actually depend upon one another, which is true for our particular case as first name does not depend upon the last name or vice versa, it is actually more convenient to create two state variables as distinct states. So we can get rid of this useState for an object and call useState with a simple string to create the variable first name along with its set function and then use state for another string to create the variable last name along with its set function. And we wire the first input with its value to first name. And now in the onChange function, instead of using set name, we will invoke set first name. And since we are not reading any previous value, we can even pass in just e.target.value. And then we can repeat the same process for the second input, wiring its value to the last name state variable and wiring its onChange to set last name, 
with either target or value. Finally, we update the div to render out first name followed by space followed by last name. And now our UI still functions as expected, except that we've factored out the single object into two useState calls. Now, throughout this lesson, we've seen TypeScript holding our hand, providing us with useful error messages, but there is one more thing worth pointing out. The useState function actually takes a generic argument and we can pass in any type, for example, the type string. With this generic type passed in, it is enforcing that the initial value must be of type string and it is also inferring the type of the variable to be string and whenever we invoke the set function, it will enforce that it follows the same type. However, for most use cases, you don't need to provide this generic argument as TypeScript will automatically infer it from the passed in initial value. So in the second example, when we are passing in just a string, TypeScript has inferred last name to be of type string and the same for the set last name function. So unless your initial value doesn't reflect all the types that you plan to use for this particular state variable, you can leave this generic argument out. And that's all for the use state hook within React. Now front-end dev, like my haircut, is ever evolving. So if there is something specific you want me to cover, leave a comment below, smash that like and subscribe for more content like this. And I will see you in the next one.